All right, I think you're stuck with me for a second slide here. Uh, so real quickly, uh, how does this work in terms of numbers? You are uh, a, a college degree at Centenary is, is 120 credits. So the uh, core is precisely one third um, of that. And that's, that's not by um, accident. We thought that was a, that seemed a, about right for how much of your experience should be in the core. And it's broken down into these four categories. I'm gonna talk a bit more about the academic found foundations that'll happen in your first year. But then you'll take uh, 12 credits of um, um, writing and then uh, public speaking, uh, eight credits of um, um, STEM, and then 12 credits in culture and society. And that's things like uh, global culture, community responsibility, uh, creative I I expression. And then, okay, I will, I will not read all of this. Um, th these academic foundations, we know that transitioning into college is a big deal. I still feel like when I started college, it was the most, it was the most exciting, but it's also one of the most difficult years of my life. And I was really excited about college. So you're dealing with a lot. And so, you know, every college has, most colleges have one class, they call it something like academic transitions, and it's supposed to do everything. We here at Centenary really take that transition process seriously. So we've split it into three classes. Now, uh, two of them are only uh, two credits, so it's like two half classes. Uh, but still three classes that really make sure that we uh, cover everything here. So nature of work, basically we wanna make sure that from the time you start, like day one, you're thinking, how am I gonna walk across that um, 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 stage in four years into a great job, right? Centenary uh, students, they don't have to become baristas unless they really want to be when they graduate. We're getting you ready for a meaningful career in your field. And part of that is, like I said, starting to think about that from the um, um, start. Uh, a two credit class on wellness. Just what it sounds like, though, with a sort of um, academic focus, part of wellness at college is, is, learn, is knowing how to learn well. Um, and, um, and then finally, a broad enduring um, interest uh, class, which the, the, the easy way to say this is we just want you to be excited about the fact that you're taking college classes. It's quite possible that you've heard all through high school that college classes are really hard. And it's true. It's a different kind of intellectual work, but it's, it's exciting work. And so we just want to get you um, just psyched about the kinds of, you know, the sort of magical intellectual things that can happen in a college classroom. So let me stop there. Any questions on core, why you're taking core, the kind of uh, classes that you'll take uh, in the core? Okay. No questions here. All right. All right. I think this is, is uh, my last one. This is a really important one um, for communication with the professors, like where and how do you communicate with, with, with professors? We find that the freshmen in particular are very nervous to talk to their professors. Um, they might be intimidated. Um, so when can you talk to your professor? Most of us are there at least 15 minutes before class and we're there for 15 or 20 minutes after class, right? So that's the easiest way to talk to your professors. Um, everybody will have office hours. Uh, they, they're scheduled at four hours a week across, across the entire week. Um, many of us don't just stick to those office hours. We will meet you anytime, any place that we're free. All you have to do is email to set up an appointment. So if they're scheduled or they're posted office hours, um, let's say you're working or you constantly have class during those office hours, don't be afraid to email the professor and ask to set up a time to meet with them. Um, and then obviously email is one of the ways. The only thing that, that I, I caution with email is sometimes we have a student that will email and they expect an immediate response within like five hours. Um, so we say give a professor 48 hours to respond. Um, usually it's less than 24 hours before your professor will respond, however. Um, we, we ask that, that, you, that you give us some time, especially on a weekend. Sometimes our, our students think that we answer um, every you know, 24 hours a, a day, seven days a week. And then texting, a lot of, uh, a lot of the professors will give you their, their cell phone to text them. 
Um, I know a lot of the equine professors very well, and I know that most of them give out their, their cell phones for you to text if you, have a, if you have a quick question. I give them to my research students um, so that if they're in the middle of an experiment and they have a question, they can just text me. Um, and then I guess the most important thing is really the professionalism in which you're reaching out to your professors. Um, I can't tell you how many emails that we've gotten that's like, yo, prof, like, no, no, like, let, let's start acting like we're, we're professionals in communicating. So um, my advice is for any of the students that are listening is to make sure that, that you're communicating with your professor in a professional manner. The other thing I wanted to mention is for any of the parents that are on, um, we often get calls from parents, um, from students who have parents who have questions, anything from, from financial aid to, to grades, to a problem in a particular class, right? Uh, there is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act form, and your, your um, center daughter has to sign this form in order to release the ability for us to talk to parents. So if, you're, if your son or daughter has not signed that form, uh, we can't talk to you about it. So what, what we do is the first thing we do when a parent reaches out is we look at that FERPA form and we see if it's signed, and if it is signed, who they've specifically given permission for us to talk to. So you will actually find forms where they say you can talk to my father, but you can't talk to my mother or vice versa. So, um, you know, have that discussion with your son or daughter and, and, and figure out what that line of communication is going to be and that that form is signed. Um, so if you need to talk to anyone, um, you know, we have the permission to do that. And can I just say one more quick thing about um, academics? And maybe this is the most important thing. Um, the, the culture here of academics is supportive. The faculty wants you to succeed. Uh, if you fail, we fail, and we only succeed if you succeed. We give you a grade at the end, but we're your coach, your cheerleader. So reach out, we are on your team. And sometimes students think we're the um, enemy. Let us be on your team. Yeah, and if you're struggling, I can't, I can't, e even if it's something like you've got three tests all in the same day, please say something to your professor, because you're probably not the only one sitting in the class that has three tests on the same day. And if you have a conversation with your professor, chances are they'll move it, they'll extend it, they'll do something, right? So you're probably not the only one in the class that's struggling. And since you take a lot of the same courses as everybody else at the same time, chances are everybody's running into that. Um, so if, if you're not afraid to have that conversation to the prof with the professor, oftentimes, you know, I've extended deadlines. I know Robert has extended deadlines, right, to, to help with, with ease off that burden a little bit. But if you don't talk to the professors or you're afraid to, that doesn't happen. Okay, so welcome to the library portion of the presentation. Uh, my name again is Amy, and I'm here with my colleague, Sarah. Uh, we're two of the librarians at Taylor Memorial Library. Uh, Sarah, did you want to introduce yourself? I mean, you kind of did before, but. Sure, yeah, just as a reminder, I am the instructional services librarian. So um, I go into classes, you'll see me uh, working with some professors, um, but I'll go into that a little bit more detail in just a minute. Okay, um, I'm the electronic services librarian. Um, so I tend to focus a lot on our online resources, our subscriptions, our search tools and making all of that as user-friendly as possible. Um, but the central role of, of any library is to support our community. And for us, that's you guys, our students. Um, so we're both a physical place that you can come to to study, but we're also um, a virtual destination through which students can access a range of uh, academic research materials, as well as support from a librarian. Um, so looking at this slide here, we're talking about research and reading materials. So of course we have those. We have books for both research and for personal reading. Our uh, fiction, children's and academic sections are always growing. We also have popular DVDs to borrow, eBooks, um, hundreds of thousands of those on our website uh, to download. There are print magazines uh, available for browsing in the library building itself. Um, hundreds of, of databases or through which you can access journal articles again, ebooks, and other electronic research materials. Um, research appointments. This is one of the things that most students we don't necessarily know that we do, but we are here to support them. So it's easy for you to come 
you know, make an appointment. We're available to meet with students who need research help uh, with, with any subject, um, either in a small group or on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And the, uh, you can do that through our website. Course textbooks, um, we don't necessarily purchase textbooks. It would, um, it would get unwieldy to try to do that. Um, but many of our professors put uh, their textbooks on reserve in the library. So what that means is they're available at the, the front desk when you come into the library. Usually a professor will let you know if they've done that, but it's, it's one way that the, some of our professors are trying to um, you know, sort of save you the cost of that textbook if, you, if, you, if it's um, prohibitive for you. Um, for other materials that we don't necessarily have, like a book or a journal article that you need to find, um, be aware that we do provide a free service um, where we request a copy of that book or article from another library in what we call interlibrary loan or ILL if you hear a librarian talking, <laughs> that's what that means. Um, and then the form to fill that out, you'll come, you'll come across through our website or um, when you're doing research in our, in our databases, there's usually a link right there um, that you can submit that if it's not uh, available in a full text format right there. So looking, um, I didn't mention this before, uh, Taylor Memorial Library, we are at the center of campus. Um, so we're also directly adjacent to the Academic Success and Advising Center. Um, so it's, uh, what we often find is that students will go from one of us to the other. And um, so it's a nice setup for students. Um, what else did I want to say here? Uh, so we have lots of different kinds of spaces for you, um, whether you need to study for an exam, find a place where you can sit for an online class, um, just do research or read and relax. Uh, we have a number of public access computers. We have laptops that are available to borrow. We have a scanner. There is a printer in our outer lobby that students can access 24 seven, even if the library itself is closed. Um, our spaces, we have some spaces available for quiet studying and then other spaces that are designated for studying as a group where you can, you know, you can have louder conversations theoretically. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention here is that the library is also the home of the university archives. We have a great collection of centenary history, um, displays and exhibits. One of our, our archivists is working on creating a mini museum in our library lobby area. Uh, we also field research questions of, uh, relating to the history of the college or the area itself. And we dis digitize some of the materials um, that we have for anybody interested in learning about the history of the school. Excuse me. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> All right, I'm up. So as Amy was saying before, we are both a physical library and a virtual library. And so we, we try to have our, our programs and services uh, reflect that physical and virtual space. And our uh, class instruction or our instruction program is no exception to that. Um, so we offer both in-person class instruction and virtual instruction over Teams, which is the platform normally used um, by many, many professors, but also Zoom as well. And so normally what happens um, in, in these classes is that a librarian is uh, a guest speaker uh, to, to talk about specific databases or resources that will be useful to uh, a particular course or even more specifically an individual assignment. So normally the librarian and professor or faculty member are working really closely to build that learning experience for the student. Um, so for example, uh, the library is pretty heavily involved in the wellness course. So one of those core courses that you will be taking, um, there, there is an online orientation and normally a follow-up visit from a librarian. Um, and so any follow-up questions from students, um, meet and greets, things like that happen during uh, that wellness portion of, of your first year experience there. Um, Amy kind of touched on this before with our with some of our resources, but I wanted to specifically highlight the Cyclone Search, which is, as it says here, the single point of entry into almost all of our library collections, uh, both electronic and physical. 
Um, so it is one search bar that you can access from the homepage of the library website. And from there, you can uh, search for books, print and digital materials, databases. So that means you get access to full text, electronic books, journal articles, newspapers, and abstracts. So there, there's a lot to dive into there. And that is why we are available to answer questions, work with fac faculty, go into those classrooms and, and really get into the nitty and gritty of what all of that means um, and how uh, we can build our information literacy skills to know when information is needed, where to go to find it, and then how to use it not only in your assignments, but also ethically in the world around you. So I did want to touch upon specifically the virtual connection, um, things that we have uh, changed or um, improved upon in the last year and a half. And uh, again, our website is, is the, the jumping off point for that. You can get in touch with us in many different ways. So we have um, an Ask a Librarian feature. Um, we normally get back to any reference or, or service questions within uh, 24 hours. We have a, a live chat and it normally takes us under 90 seconds to answer a chat that comes through that. And you can always call us and email us as well. Um, and as Amy mentioned before, you can book an appointment to, to uh, meet with us virtually as well, um, either over Zoom or Teams again. But we're, we're also happy to, to meet with you in, in person as allowed. Um, probably one of the most rewarding uh, parts of our job, getting, getting to know our students and, and in that way. We also offer workshops and special events. Sometimes the special events are um, campus-wide and hosted uh, near or in the library. Um, but oftentimes we have workshops related to learning more about databases, um, how to uh, cite uh, resources in APA or MLA format. Um, and we have different types of, of more, more recreational or a supplemental um, uh, workshops and, and events, including um, graphic novel book club, we have a nonfiction book club, and we have done more artistic or creative things in the past, board game nights, things like that. Um, and, I, and I just want to highlight real quick um, the, the workshop series that we have coming up this fall. It's actually called our digital, digital wellness series. Um, so it'll be perfect, a perfect tie in with those wellness classes. So to learn more about that, again, you can go to our website. And then to wrap up here, I just want to highlight all the different ways that you can get not only, um, you know, well, get in contact with us, but also uh, see what is going on at the library at any given point in time. The website is there. We are on Instagram. We post any, you know, last minute changes to hours or, you know, uh, event information on there. Um, we have our Facebook linked with Instagram, but also we, we post separate items on Facebook. We have a YouTube for tutorials. Uh, we have an archives blog, which uh, delves into more of that history that Amy was talking about and the digital collections. And lastly, we have a resource memo that is a monthly uh, email subscription um, email that you can sign up for, subscribe for it on our website. And every month you'll get uh, an email uh, with updates on what's happening at the library. So find us online. Thanks. Okay, so an overview of Academic Success and Advising Center. So the Academic Success and Advising Center houses a couple of different areas. Um, so. We have, of course, our Office of Academic Success, but we also have the Disability Services Office, the Office of Veteran Services, International um, and English Language Learner Academic Support, and the Tutoring Center are all under the Academic Success and Advising Center head. Um, so some of the things that we do just through academic success is we do offer workshops. Um, at the beginning of each semester, we do workshops such as tips for success, time management, test prep, academic apps. Um, these are both live and online. Um, so they are recorded and you can go back and just listen to them anytime. We're also doing a summer workshop series that you may have gotten emails about 
um, for before the semester starts for students to start working on some of these skills. We also offer academic coaching. This is a free service available to all students where they can set up a meeting with a success specialist to develop some strategies and enhance academic skills. Some of the topics are similar to what we do workshops on, but it could also be something specific. You have a long-term assignment you're working on and you wanna come in and, and plan that out with an academic coach. You can sign up for an appointment for that. And then we do academic advising. So as you may already have done, um, we do first semester advising for all of our incoming first year students. Um, and then for students who are undecided on their major, we do that advising as well until they do select a major. So the Disability Services Office um, has a couple of different options for how you can access accommodations. So you can just go for, you can just apply for accommodations. So any member of the university community that experiences a disability can request accommodations to make the environment accessible. Um, to apply for accommodations, you just submit your documentation and your application. For students who think they might need a little bit more support, we do have an intensive support program. It's called Project Able. This is a fee-based program, um, and it is designed specifically for students who have differences that affect learning due to their disability. Um, and again, to apply for that, you submit an application and then accompanying uh, documentation. So for that, we're usually looking for a psychological and an educational evaluation, whereas for accommodations, the documentation can be any, any range of items. It could be medical notes. It could be testing that was done. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Okay, so the tutoring center is kind of my wheelhouse. I coordinate all of the tutoring services on campus and that is a free service for all students. Uh, we're located in the SAE building and we offer multiple modes of tutoring for students. So we do have individual appointments, which are between a student and the tutor one-on-one. -on -one. We have drop-in tutoring, which does not require an appointment. So there are tutoring opportunities during certain days and times during the week where a student can just drop by the tutoring center and there will be a tutor on hand to answer questions about a specific course. And we do have our net tutor online platform as an, another alternative for students. Um, that's also helpful too, if you wanted extra help for a particular class or we don't have a particular tutor for a course. Um, ideally for the fall semester, we, our tutoring will be offered both in person and virtually. The tutoring center can also be used as a study space. So we do have cubicles and rooms in the tutoring center that can be reserved uh, for one-on-one -on -one space or if you'd like to study with a group. And we also have um, computers, two in the front for student use, as well as numerous handouts for academic strategies like TAM management, studying, and test prep. So the International and English Language Learner Academic Support also comes from our center. And for those populations, we do offer tutoring, language support, and academic coaching. So for tutoring, um, the ESL is typically offered as a drop-in service weekly. So again, no appointment needed, but those students can drop in for additional help, although you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one refresher session. For language support, those are typically one-on-one -on -one sessions offered to assist students that would be scheduled with a success specialist. And then for academic coaching, again, those appointments can be one-on-one -on -one with the success, success specialist. That can be a one-time appointment, or if the student needs additional help, there could be multiple sessions of that coaching appointment. And uh, we also serve as the liaison between students and different members of campus, such as faculty and staff. And as Michelle mentioned, the Office of Veteran Services is also part of our office. Uh, Margie Padlichko is the director, and it's kind of a one-stop shop for any questions you have. She's great with any answers and assistance you might need. So the services provided through our, that office um, are for student veterans and veteran dependents, active military and reservists in the centenary community. And if you had any questions about these benefits, uh, Margie Pavlichko would be kind of the point of contact and she'd be able to provide you with additional information on any resources or benefits that would be available. And lastly, Dr. Berge so nicely described the FERPA. I really don't wanna 
disrupt that nice description with how I would try to phrase that. So I will just reiterate that it is a form that students will be required to complete. Um, it is effective on the first day of the term and it does allow permission for specific individuals to be able to speak with certain people on campus um, about different subjects. So disciplinary, academics, financial aid, and I think there's one more billing. Yeah, um, so those would be the four categories that a student could check off and give specific permission to individuals um, to speak with us about those topics. And students also have the option to not fill it out, just so parents are always aware. So we have it available for students to fill out. I believe they do it at orientation. But um, you know, if students don't want to share anything, then they just simply don't fill out the form. So did you have any questions for us? <laughs> Well, I guess we, I, I'm, I'm going to ask because my daughter's always shy about that and parents always embarrass them. But um, so a couple of things. One, at the um, at the library, are the spaces, because I remember when I was growing up, were this, are the spaces reserved ahead of time or are they first come, first served if you need a study space or quiet space or anything else? So we do not require uh, appointments to come in and we don't need, you don't need to reserve a space, but we do have uh, different types of studying spaces. We have quiet study space, individual study space, and then more collaborative space where you can meet with friends, work on projects, meet with a professor, things like that. Okay. And um, also on the, I, maybe I'm confusing this with something else, but on, on the FERPA form at the end, when she fills that out, does that, since since mom and dad are going to be figuring out how to foot the bill for the remainder of, of college, does that is that the form you fill out to make sure the bills also come to us so that we don't miss anything as a parent, or is that something different? That's the proxy. Okay. That's something different. And that, I believe, can be done through self-service, but the okay. billing office would probably be a better point of contact. The FERPA is... Essentially, it, it lives in the registrar's office, mm -hmm. and it's where we go to check when parents call, but we don't actually like release any information through that. So even if you're on the FERPA, it doesn't mean that anybody will actually reach out to you. It just means when you ask a question, we'll be able to answer. <laughs> okay. And, but you can and, do financial aid and billing proxies, I'm pretty sure. And, and here's, a, here's a strange question, which is, out of all the kind of academic help and tutoring services that kind of are offered, which one would you say most incoming freshmen probably lean on the most? I would say the generic tutoring options, yeah, Abby? Like the one-on-one -on -one appointments are probably the most popular. I'd say so. I guess it depends on the subject, but I'd say for first-year students, for certain subjects, that's probably, I, I get the most requests um, during their first year as they're uh, working through some of their classes, mostly math, math and science. I get a lot of requests through. So, so yeah, it might be my department over here. Hmm. And I, I would say uh, we often have students who think they go to tutoring when they start struggling. Um, you know, being one of the co-advisors to the pre-vet program, we always stress set up a tutor from the get-go, um, especially if you're nervous about a subject. And then if you don't need it, great. You don't have to keep going. But it could be the difference between an A or a B. It could be the difference between a C or a B. So set up your tutoring soon, right? At the beginning of the course. And then if you don't need it, you don't need it. But at least you're set up for the better part of the, the academic year to start with. And the tutoring is with, are they with uh, seniors and juniors or are they with staff? And so it's a mix of peer and professional tutors. So I have professional tutors, I'm about 10 or 11 who have bachelor's degree or higher. And then I also have peer tutors who are current students at Centenary. Um, they have a 3.0 GPA or higher and they've received an A minus or higher in the course that they're tutoring. Okay, so if she has issues with something in equine, she's probably gonna be paired with somebody that she sees at the barn possibly if it's not a professor or somebody along those lines. Exactly, yep. We also see a lot of first year students and freshmen use the library's physical space as 
almost like a, a second home away from home, away from their dorm, somewhere they can go um, away from potentially the, the noise of the dorm uh, to find that, that steady space to focus. One of the things we didn't mention is the collaboratory. Robert, can I throw you under the bus to talk about what that resource is? Sure, I was just gonna think, huh, Abby should talk about the writing code laboratory. So Abby, if there's anything that I um, leave out. So um, this is uh, focused particularly on writing and it's all um, 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 student tutors, uh, students who have been through an in entire uh, 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 class, just teaching them how to be a um, writing tutor. Uh, so um, it's just a, it's, it's a, a further, um, resource for um, um, students and many faculty, especially many uh, composition faculty, re require their students to um, set up appointments at the um, writing co, co um, laboratory. Uh, so, um, Abby, is there anything else I should mention? There? That it's not just for your writing courses. So it's not just for writing one thousand one or writing one thousand two. So their tutors can cover writing for a variety of courses: business, criminal justice, psychology. You can go there for any type of writing assignment, um, and their tutors are trained to work with you specifically to help you through that. And they're located in the library. They're in, in the bottom level of the library. Um, and they are willing to also do appointments in the library for students who can't get to that bottom level because it is um, unfortunately a flight of stairs down and there's not elevator yet. Um, but, and it is run by a composition faculty member. So that is actually run through the faculty, which is why I forgot to include it on our slides. Sorry about that. <laughs> And it's really nice to have all of these uh, student services all in one place. You know, we have the academic success, we have the library, the writing collaboratory. Um, and so normally when, when a student comes in, they come to the desk, they have a question about, you know, uh, source integration, uh, which is related to writing, but oftentimes we need to find those sources before we can uh, integrate them into the writing. And so it's really nice to, to have um, both of these services very close to each other so that we can, um, refer as, as necessary. Anything else? No, I think you've gotten the questions we've needed and I think you've answered a lot of things or at least highlighted a lot of things for both of us in the, in the presentation. So I'm gonna just end with saying Centenary wants to support students. So please come see any of us and take advantage of those supports. We find that too often students wait until they've either done poorly on something or you know are, are in some academic trouble before they actually show up on our doorsteps. So I always encourage students at these presentations to please take advantage of the resources right off the bat, get to know us and know that we're, we're here to help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.